Welcome back everybody. Now today I've got a collection of gadgets under 15 bucks to make your life easier. Let's check it out in today's video. All right, so I know I've done some rather expensive gadgets lately, but today I'm going to the bargain bin. That's right. I'm going for the cheap stuff on Amazon. All the gadgets today cost me under 15 bucks. So I'm just gonna grab one off the stack and get started. Let's take a look at this burger holder right here. Well, that's, that's pretty much all it is. It literally is just a holder for your burger, but the, I guess the one nice feature is that it actually adjusts, so you could have a, a pretty thick burger in there. Their Amazon page says it is adjustable, easy to clean, fits a variety of size burgers, and prevents mess. The pros say that nothing drips out and that it's adjustable and fits most burgers. The cons say that it's kind of expensive for what it is and it doesn't fit all size burgers. In fact, if you saw my car gadget video this year, I had the Sauce Moto Dip Clip, which is also for fast food in your car. So let's see, this is a good pair as I try out the burger holder at my favorite fast food joint. We've got the burger holder from Agobi, I guess. And here it is. This is a pretty simple device. I think I paid 10 bucks for it, but last I checked it was 15, so it's between 10 and 15 bucks. All it does is hold your burger, but the nice thing about it is it's actually adjustable. I don't know of a burger that thick, but if you had a burger that thick, it would actually hold it. But I am actually holding a delectable burger from one of my favorite places, In-N-Out. They serve it in a paper version of that, but some people don't have paper versions, especially when they're making burgers at home. So let me transfer it over. All that, all that yummy gooey sauce in there all right let's just stick it in here all right there we go now not all fast food places serve the burgers and paper some of them just kind of give it to you in a box and when you're eating in your car it can get kind of messy so i'm going to eat the burger with the burger holder and see how it feels i'm kind of wondering what happens when you get the bottom i guess you just take it out there with your hands i don't know it feels very solid though so i kind of like it Mm. Some people hate on the In-N-Out fries, but I actually like them. Um, I don't know why people hate on them so much. I always thought they were pretty good. But I actually got my Sauce Moto dip clip from my car gadget video over here. And yes, it is 117 degrees in Vegas right now. 117. But between the, uh, the Sauce Moto dip clip and the burger holder... Oh, what's that? Are you sure you don't like the In-N-Out fries? I don't know why people don't like them. I like In-N-Out fries. I'm curious how dirty it's going to be when I'm done eating. So let me eat this burger. I'll get down to the bottom and I'll check back in in a minute. I'll check back in in a minute. So I guess when you get down to the bottom, you have to use your hand. You can't, you can't stick your mouth in there. So it's still keeping the mess off me though. If this was not in a bag to begin with, I probably would be really messy right now. When you get down to the bottom like this, it's more like a bowl than a burger holder because you have to kind of rest it in there, but you can't put your mouth in there. It still works though. I mean, look at that. That would be on my shirt. Ew. The other thing is it's not leaking. I thought maybe it might leak. I think this would be good for people who are in, who eat in their car a lot, for maybe kids in the car. It seems like there'd be a lot of uses for something like this. I mean, it seems maybe a little bit expensive for a piece of plastic, but sometimes you just gotta, just gotta take the hit and, and get it if it's actually worth it. And to me, it might be worth it. Mm. So I do think that the burger holder actually does work exactly as expected. There was no surprises. It didn't leak. Uh, the only thing is when you get to the bottom, you have to start kind of using your fingers. It's not a really that big of a deal. When you're done, it's going to sit in your car kind of nasty. You have, to, you have to clean it. So, Otherwise, I think the burger holder does work. Next up off the stack, I've got lock laces. This cost me about eight bucks. These are supposed to be the original no-tie elastic shoelaces. Let's open them up and try them out. I have to read the instructions on these. That's, uh, that's all it is. Two elastic bands, two of these, two of these. And the lock laces have a 4.6 star rating on Amazon with 24,000 reviews, which is a lot. They're almost universally praised on Amazon. People are saying they're good for kids, for boots. Someone said they even use them for pants. As far as the cons go, there weren't many, but a few people said they didn't last that long. But let me go outside and try the lock laces on a pair of shoes. First thing I noticed in the instructions, which I'll put a better picture of the instructions there, is that it says to, for proper fit, install with your foot in your shoe. Now, the shoes I wanted to use these for are actually an older pair of shoes. Now, the shoes are in good shape, but the laces aren't. Now, I'm not sure if this kind of polka dot design is gonna look good on these. I wasn't really sure what shoes I was gonna use them on when I ordered them, so. If the design doesn't work, I'll take responsibility for that. I'm not gonna blame them for it, but 
So uh, I guess the first thing I need to do is just take my old laces off and lace it up. These are definitely stretchy. I'm not used to that because my old laces are not stretchy. I, I guess I don't mind the kind of polka dot design so much. After they're laced up, you got to lock them. It seems like I push this down and push it through there. Maybe I'm trying to make this more difficult than it really is. Maybe it's really just that easy. Wow. And then they say you're supposed to cut it about three inches below that. So let me, let me do that. Wow, that's, that, was, that was shockingly easy. I'm used to these products that have convoluted instructions, barely readable English, that barely make any sense, but this was pretty straightforward. I'm not 100% sure I like them on these shoes. All right, step number three is to cut them three inches below. Well, I hope that was right. And then clip. I had to go look up the, the clip part because I was doing it upside down. They have a good video on YouTube. So. so these ends go through here. And there it is. I'll be honest, I don't think this is a good fit for this shoe. This looks more like it'd be something on a, on a sneaker or tennis shoe. I thought it might be a good replacement for this particular shoe. It, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't look right to me. That doesn't mean it doesn't work though. It works, it's, it works pretty, I can already tell it works well. People were showing it being used on, on a variety of different types of shoes, but I'm, I'm not sure about this. That's just stylistically though. Functionally, it seems to work quite well. I'm gonna try it on a different shoe. This time it'll be a tennis shoe, see how it works. All right, here we go. This is a, this is a black Nike. I can already tell this is a better fit for this type of shoe. They have a lot of different styles, designs of these. I just ordered a, a pair of black ones and figured I'd, I have so many black shoes I would try it out. Probably not as much on my dress shoes, but on here it looks, it looks really nice. This part's pretty easy. All you do is push this down and push, thread it through there. Very simple. Hold it down. Tighten it up. They say you're supposed to move your foot around, make sure it's comfortable. Feels pretty good to me. That wasn't quite three inches, oh well. All right, here they are. If I was gonna leave it on these, I'd probably make this a little bit shorter. I think it definitely works better on the tennis shoes. It certainly works though. Let me walk around a little bit and I'll check back in at the end of the video, let you know how it's going. What I'm gonna do is take the lock laces from the dress shoe and put it on my other tennis shoe. I think it works better for those. I'm gonna use these until I'm done with this video and I'll let you know at the very end how they're holding up. All right, the very lowest end of the price range, I've got these Coleman soap sheets. This one's got a 4.5 star rating with over 700 reviews. It's got 50 sheets in here. They say it's safe for the environment, TSA friendly, and it's a great travel accessory. The pros on Amazon say that it creates a lot of suds. It's good for kids, camping, planes, playgrounds. The cons say that it needs a lot of water to rinse it off, and some people said they're too small. It reminds me a little bit of the pack and wipes that I did for a travel video last year, which I don't think these are available anymore, but I might try to pair these two together and see if they work out. So I'm gonna go outside and try out the Coleman soap sheets with the pack and wipes. All right, I'm ready to try the Coleman camp soap sheets. This should be interesting. I'm also gonna see how one of these pack and wipes do to wipe it off, we'll see. I'm not gonna attempt to actually pronounce all the ingredients. What I'll do right now is I'll put an overlay right here that shows you all the ingredients are and if you wanna pause the screen, you can see what they all are, but hopefully there's nothing in there that's too bad. Although it does say there's something that the state of California doesn't like about it, so take that for what it is. Here we go, okay. It's very, it's very thin. People in the comments were complaining they're too small. That's about what I expected it to be. It's a, you know, it's the size of my thumb. I don't know. It kind of feels a little bit like tracing paper. One side seems rough and one side seems slick. So I guess I just put some water in my hand. Okay, well, hey. It's pretty soapy. It's pretty soapy, but it's kind of drying right now too. I don't know if you can see the soap on there or not, but it's still soapy. Let me try one of these pack and wipes here. Like I said, I don't think they sell the pack and wipes, but they, they sell things just like it. No sticky residue. There's not much of a smell. I don't know, I think I, I, think I kind of like this. I, I think I'm gonna put it in my car because there's, there's a lot of times I've needed, I have water usually, but I don't always have soap. So this would be pretty, uh, pretty useful, I think. They do say it's uh, TSA approved, so 
I think it's gonna be freaking reviews approved. I kinda like these, and it's only four bucks, not a bad deal. My hands feel very clean, and they don't smell bad. It's a, there's a very faint soap smell, but it's, I, I prefer that. I prefer to have a faint smell than a strong one. Oh, Bailey likes it. Bailey says it's okay. See that tail wagon? That means it's all right. Now I've done a lot of pans, so the next product is something that I'm actually kind of hoping works out because some of the handles I've done on my pan reviews have been kind of hot. This is a silicone pan handle cover. Not really much to it, is there? They say that it's one size fits most. I think it's safe up to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. It's anti-slip and prevents you from getting your hands burned. This one has a 4.2 star rating with over 7,500 reviews. The pros say that it adds nice grip and it works with a variety of pans. The cons say that it does get hot, it doesn't fit all pans, and it's flimsy. So let's try this one out and see how it works. All right, what I've got here is a cast iron skillet. This has a very hot handle. The blue diamond pan, which is probably the hottest handle of all the pans that I've reviewed. I want to see how this works on both of these. First of all, let's see how hot these really are. Cast iron handle, 115. I think it's that hot outside. Let me see the blue diamond. Handle, 122, 130, pretty hot. I don't know if it just slides, I might have to use a pothole to hold this in place, which kind of defeats the purpose. But let's see here. I'm gonna leave this on here for a while since this is the hotter of the two. Right now it feels pretty good, as you would expect. Let me just see if it fits the cast iron skillet. Oh, it does fit. I mean, it's a little bit loose. Yeah, it works pretty well. Measurements are anywhere from 140 to 200. All right, I'm gonna leave it on here for a little bit and see what happens. It does have a nice grip to it. It doesn't seem like it's moving around too much, even on that one, which has a smaller handle. It seemed like it held pretty well. So the grip, I think, is good. Let's see how the heat dissipation works. By the way, I should also point out that even though it says it's safe up to 475 degrees, I don't think you're supposed to actually put it in the oven the entire time. There were comments saying that they put it in the oven and it became kind of a big melted goopy mess. All right, it's been about five minutes. Let me check the temperature of the handle. Let me, see, let me feel it first. It feels warm, but it's, it's bearable. It's not uncomfortably warm. Let's see. All right, so we're getting readings about, oh, 98, 99. Not, it's warm, but it's not unbearable. Up here towards the top, it feels like it's certainly warmer than down here. Let me take the cover off and see how warm it really gets. Same spot, it's about, oh, 160, 160, anywhere from 150 to 160 degrees in the exact same spot. So it certainly worked. I'm gonna try one more test of this. A little bit longer this time. I'm just gonna put the burner on five, hit my stopwatch. I'm gonna let this go for maybe about a half an hour. The reason being is because if you put it on after it's hot, you have to hold the pan in place anyway. So let's start from the beginning, get it hot, go for a little while, and see how this actually does. I know the handle is going to be blazing hot if I don't have this, but let's see what happens when I do. All right, it's been over a half an hour. All right, the, ha the handle's warm, but it's certainly not unbearable. It's, if I didn't have this on here, my hand would probably be burnt right now. Let's take a look at the actual temperatures. The pan itself, nice and warm, nice and warm. Let me try this part of the handle that's exposed. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty warm too. Now I'll go on to the handle cover. It's pretty warm up there still, as you go back. Oh, down there it's actually, at the end of the handle, not hot at all. Working my way backward, from the end of the handle, it gets get a little bit warmer toward the end. Now onto the exposed part of the handle, very hot, and the pan. So I think that the, I think the handle does work. Unlike my first test, it's better to put it on beforehand rather than during. This is actually a sunglasses holder. So as someone who's reviewed a lot of sunglasses and I had an entire drawer full of sunglasses, let's see how this actually works. Not really much to it, is there? The pros on Amazon said that it was well made and that it prevented the glasses from getting scratched. The cons say that it doesn't fit all size glasses and that it felt cheap. So I have a place picked out for this for all my sunglasses, so let's go put it up. But I'm gonna put this right over there where that poster's at. And it holds 25 pairs of sunglasses. I've got 24 right here. I pulled out all the glasses that I'm re I've reviewed plus some other ones. I've got quite a few of them right here. I'm not going to go over what all these are, but if you want to stick around to the end of the video, I will tell you what every single one of these glasses are, because some of them have a backstory, some don't. All right, so let's head over there, hang up the sunglasses holder, and see how it does. By the way, that's me. 
Very 80s, very 80s, good times. But let me take this off the wall here. So there really weren't any instructions with this. I guess you just, there's not much to really know, is there? You just stick your sunglasses in there, so you try it out. All right, they just, here's how they show it in the picture. Just, just I guess just like that. It kind of sticks way out though, but yeah, we'll see how it looks. Walter White glasses, battle vision. This might go a little bit faster than music montage. I'll be honest, I actually kind of like it. I like it a lot, actually. I have room for my next pair of sunglasses. I got 24 in there, it holds 25. The only time I saw them bumping each other, I, the Redshift XT and whichever one this is, they kind of hit the night view and the zoomies touched a little bit, but really yeah, they're, keep, they're kept pretty separate. I didn't spend a lot of time doing it, but I think it actually worked quite well. This is actually much better than the drawer I had before. I wish I had done this a lot sooner. Next up is Jot from my friends at Dream Farm. Jot stands for Just Hold It. These are little suction cups that have a variety of uses. They say from toothbrushes to razors to cables. 4.1 star rating on Amazon with 134 reviews as of this filming. The pros on this one say that it's good for travel, it's good for holding razors in the shower. Now the cons say that it doesn't work on all surfaces very well, so which means you have to resort to the adhesive, which some people don't really want to use. When I was always growing up, we always had our shopping list attached to the fridge. And the problem has always been where to put the pen. So they say that the Jot works well on glossy surfaces. Otherwise, you have to use the adhesive pad. But I'm not sure if the slate fridge counts as glossy or not. But I'm going to try it. All right. Feels pretty secure. So far, seems pretty secure. Come back tomorrow and see how, how it's holding up. The pen fell off. I wasn't sure if it was going to stay on the surface. Well, I got my answer. So the question I have now is, will it stay with this adhesive disc? And when I take the adhesive disc off, will it leave anything behind in my fridge? I hope it doesn't, but I'm gonna take a chance anyways, just for you guys. Adhesive disc. All right, there we go. Now we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it stays up this time. And after I'm sure that it's gonna stay up, I'm gonna take the adhesive off and see what's left behind. Hopefully nothing. We shall see. Probably one of the best uses for the jot would be to hold your toothbrush. That way it's not touching anything gross. And this is a very smooth surface, which is designed for, so let's try it out. All right, there we go. It looks nice and sturdy. You see it in and out. This is, I'm simulating a bunch of days here. This might be a good use for it, so uh, come back in a few days and see how it's holding up. In my shower, I've got the squeegee, which I wipe the doors off with. Let me try a razor right here near it. This is the Fusion 5 that I reviewed three years ago. I still use it. All right, I think that's going to be the way it'll be held. This is supposed to be good for tile, so let's see how it works. I'll come back in a few days and see how it looks. I kind of want to hang something on this wood surface right here because the suction cup would never stay on a wood surface like this. So let me try the suction cup with their adhesive disc and see how that goes. Now I just gotta find something to hang there. Let me see. How about this back scratcher? I know I'm not the only person that uses back scratchers. How about a back scratcher? Perfect. We shall see how that does as well. Everybody needs a back scratcher nearby, right? After a couple days, this has stayed quite nicely. The only thing I've noticed has nothing to do with the jot, but when you put your wet toothbrush there, it tends to drip down the mirror, so I have to, have to definitely have to dry it off better, but I can say that it's in very good shape after several days of use. As far as the razor goes, the razor actually fell off a couple times, but the jot has not. I should point out that I did clean this very well before I put it up there in the first place. If you don't clean your tile first, it probably won't stick as well. Admittedly, this is not something I actually have used, but it, it stayed in place, and uh, this, this feels pretty sturdy. Very sturdy, actually. Now let's see what happens with the jot on the fridge, which has been, it's it, very solidly in place right now. I don't even know if I can pull it off there. Okay, well the section part came off. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about this. Wow, that's just, this is definitely on there. All right, got this in there. Was not easy. Uh, 
Oh, not too much. Let me see. I'll be, I'll be honest. I thought for sure there was going to be a bunch of uh, adhesive left behind, and really there isn't. I could just scrape it off with my nail. Well, that's, that's a good thing. All right, it's time to wrap this video up. Now what I'm gonna do is rank all these from six to number one. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts and any updates since my original test of the product. Let's get started with number six, which is the handle cover. This one might be a little bit situational because some people have very good gripping pot holders out there, but this is something that stays on the pan. It doesn't get real hot. It does give you a good grip. I think that for six bucks, there's a lot of people out there who probably think it's a decent investment. If you've got a good pot holder, you might not. I'm gonna pick number five to be the Jot. This is something that's gonna be situational as well. I think that if you've got ideas where you wanna use it and you're not worried about either the adhesive being on there or if it's a glossy surface, it might be a good fit. If you don't wanna use the adhesive and it's not a glossy surface, it might not be as good for you. But if you're someone who likes to be neat and organized, this might be a good product for you. Number four is the burger holder. The burger holder, I have nothing to update because it pretty much works or it doesn't. In my case, it did work. It doesn't spill, it was easy to clean, it prevented my shirt from getting messy. So really, it worked as advertised. I think the only problem is that a lot of people out there might think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is, but if you get it, I think you're gonna like it. Number three is the sunglasses organizer. Now, I have nothing really to update on that either, but I really like the aesthetic of it. It's, it's a much more attractive display than all my sunglasses thrown in a drawer and getting scratched up. So I'm actually quite happy with it. Now, if you're the DIY type, you might be able to make something like that on your own, but if you do buy it, I think you're gonna like it. That leads us to the top two, and number two, I'm gonna go with the lock laces. This has been kind of a game changer as far as shoelaces go for me. Usually I've always left my tennis shoes a little bit loose because I don't want to have to untie them and retie them every time I use them. So it's kind of a trade-off because you're not really supposed to wear them like that. But with lock laces, you don't have to. You can easily tighten them and loosen them with just a pull of the string. It's very simple. I've been using it for several days now. I went to the park yesterday. I was training with my trainer outside and I had no problems with them. So I'm a fan of lock laces, and I know there's a lot of fans out there, and I, now I've joined the bandwagon and I can see why. And that leaves me with number one, which is the least glamorous, but the also least expensive of all these products, which is the Coleman Soap Sheets. My pick as number one is probably slightly influenced by the, what's going on in the world in 2020, when hand washing is so important. But it's also very convenient, because you don't have to worry about spilling like with sanitizers or drying with sanitizing wipes. Not everybody's gonna have water on them. I typically do, especially in my car, so it's not really a problem for me. It's compact, it provides a good amount of soap. It's only four bucks, so I think that the Coleman soap sheets is definitely something a lot of people are gonna like. So that's it, if you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. Stick around for my sunglasses explanation. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time. If you've stuck around this long, let's take a look at all these sunglasses. Most of these I've actually done in past reviews, but some I haven't. This, I believe, is the Tac Glasses Blue. Never reviewed them. I bought them and realized that people didn't want to see any more Tac Glasses. This was actually for a Walter White costume I bought, I think back in 2018. This is for Halloween, it wasn't for a video. I should probably wear these more often. They're actually not bad. These are the Military Tough Battle Vision. I did review those. Now these I bought at the UFO store in Boulder City, uh, Nevada. I think I only paid like a buck for them. They're pretty funny looking though. These, I believe, are the fake night view NVs. And these are the real night view NVs, which I compared, I think, in a Wish video a couple years ago. This is just an old pair of aviator glasses that don't even really fit that well anymore. I'm trying to remember what these are. What are these? These are from Bulbhead, but I don't remember what they are. I, it's not the Battle Vision. It must be the HD Vision Special Ops. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's on the side. HD Vision Special Ops. I believe these are the original tech glasses. I think these were the big lots fake tech glasses. Who can forget Zoomies, right? One of the greatest I've seen on TV products of all time. In some universe, I'm sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are the night tech, tech vision, tech night. Tech night, these were called. The tech glasses night vision. These light up glasses are the mighty sight. I think these are the tech glasses blue but I thought these were the tech glasses blue. One of these is the tech glasses blue and the other one I think is a, an Amazon sunglasses. I don't remember. This is just a regular pair of glasses. Wait, these aren't even mine. These are my daughter's. What are they doing in here? This is actually a pair of reading glasses I bought for Walter White costume. Redshift XT. Now these glasses I'm pretty sure go with this shirt for an Allen costume from The Hangover. These are my glasses.